Good evening, boys and girls. My name is Nathan, and today we're going to talk about dragons. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to start recording these Q&A videos more frequently. If I see a comment that I think is really interesting, or if it's something I've answered before, but I want to dive a little bit deeper into it, or if it's just something I want to talk about, I'm going to start putting these short videos up more frequently, so watch for those. You're going to be able to find them all in one place in the questions and answers playlist on my YouTube channel. So let's jump into dragons. Today, Ollie asked me, what are your thoughts of Thunder Mahal Kite versus Storm Breath Dragon? Now, the debate has been out there many different times on the internet, which is the better dragon? And I'm inclined to say that it's generally Thunder Mahal Kite. I think I have some good reasons to back that up. So let's take a look at the cards and talk about them. On the left, we have Storm Breath Dragon. Five mana, he's a red dragon, flies, haste, just like Thunder Mahal Kite. Uh, but he's a 4-4, four, four, whereas Thunder Mahalkite is a 5-5. Five, five. But while he is smaller, he has protection from white, which is pretty huge. And it's probably never likely to happen in modern. I mean, it will from rare time to rare time. But he can become even bigger uh, and deal more damage based on the cards by, by going by with monstrosity. Um, and obviously, Thunder Mahalkite has a really cool ability. So one of the arguments or one of the topics you'll see where these cards are sort of pitted against each other is which card is better against lingering souls now i know some of you might say oh obviously it's thunder maul kite but some people argue that storm breath is better because thunder maul can be blocked like he may kill lingering souls tokens but he'll get blocked by subsequent lingering souls tokens now you have to look at the deck that people were normally discussing this in, and that was abzan and you got to think about what is that matchup really about? And, you know, I know some of you more veteran players may get all this. So, you know, if I'm already, if I'm telling things that you guys already know, just sit tight. Uh, but, you know, some of you might be newer. Some of you may just not spend a lot of time sort of thinking about magic theory. So it's for you guys that I want to sort of make sure we establish what a grindy or attrition based matchup is. Because these are terms you're going to see out there. But when you're facing off like Jeskai versus Abzan, it is a grinding and attrition-based matchup. What that means is for each threat, the opposing deck has a good answer for it. There's a lot of creatures in Abzan. Generally, we have a lot of good answers for it. Path to Exile. Uh, Lightning Bolt is less good against the deck, but... In, the, in general, that's how those two decks operate. And they each have ways that they try to get ahead. Abzan does that a couple of different ways, and, and two of the most notable ones are one is Liliana of the Veil. Because even if, say, you have a Celestial Purge for her, when she comes down and gets plussed, even you purge her with that on the stack, you still have to discard a card. The other way that they get rid of it, or the, the other way that they get ahead is with cards like Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls is kind of a four for one. You get four creatures out of one card and when you're facing off against a deck like Jeskai and we have a lot of one for one removal spells that are really good against a card like Siege Rhino or Tarmogoyf they're really bad against a card that is four creatures in one because if you spend a lightning bolt to kill a lingering souls token you're spending an entire card to kill one fourth of a card that's terrible exchange one of the ways Jeskai gets ahead is with cards like Snapcaster Mage, because we can buy our spells back. Now, there is a world where you can deal with Lingering Souls with Electrolyze and Snapcaster Mage Electrolyze. Um, and that does happen sometimes, but a card that's even better at dealing with Lingering Souls is Thunder Mount Hellkite. Now, one argument you may see with, Thunder, with Storm Breath Dragon is, and I think I may just mention this, but I'll ex expand on it a little more. Um, Let's say you cast Thunder Maul, kills a bunch of Lingering Souls tokens, they cast more Lingering Souls tokens. Now you can't now you're you're gonna get chump block a lot. Storm Breath Dragon never gets chump blocked. The thing is, because they're the, the Lingering Souls tokens are white and he has protection from white. But the thing is, if you're talking about a damage race, they have the same power. Lingering Souls actually has four power and four toughness. Storm Breath Dragon has four power and four toughness. So that is a race that sort of cancels each other out. If you attack and then they attack back, 
and neither of you are really getting ahead. Now, who attacked first aside? Storm of the Dragon doesn't outrace Lingering Souls, and if it has multiple Lingering Souls, it certainly doesn't outrace multiple Lingering Souls. Um, now, Thunderbolt Hellkite, while he can't punch through Lingering Souls, he can kill any Lingering Souls that are on the battle because of his end-of-the-battlefield ability. But that's also really important for another reason. Because he's always going to be a 2-for-1. Um, or at the very least, a 1.5-for-1. Because if they've only cast half a Lingering Souls, they still have one in the graveyard. Kind of a corner case. But if you if, if they have ling, you know both sides of Lingering Souls out, they've cast it, they flashed it back. You play Thunder Mahalakite, even if they have a Path to Exile, that's a 2-for-1. Because they had to get rid of Thunder Mahalakite with a Path. That's one card. But you also killed Lingering Souls tokens. And when you're talking about a matchup that is very much attrition-based, meaning who can deal with the other's threats in the most efficient way possible, therefore retain more cards or just generate more virtual card advantage, that is very much likely the person that's going to win that match. That is what the match is about. It's about drawing cards. It's about dealing, trying to get as many two-for-ones as you can. That way... You could one person finally ends up with one threat in play that he kills you with, um, or draws a threat and the other person doesn't have an answer. That's why cards against like Abzan. That's why Karanos is, is really good. Um, that's also actually why um, uh, Celestial Colony is so good in Jeskai because it is a land that is also a spell. It's like it, it's. I was almost said it's 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 two for one. It's not a two for one, but it's a two in one. When you draw a Celestial Colony, you are not just drawing a land that does nothing, you are drawing a land that later is going to be a spell. So it's like you're running less lands in your deck. But anyway, um, the other going back to the Thunderball, the other reason that he's really great in our deck, in a Jeskai deck, specifically the Jeskai midrange deck, is because he guarantees that even if they can kill him, any other flyers that you have on the battlefield are going to get through. Geist's flyer to angel token is going to get through. Vendillion, Vendillion Click will get through. Excuse me. Restoration Angel is going to get through. And if they don't have a path to exile or a way to kill Thunder Maw at instant speed, he is 100% guaranteed to punch through any flyers because he taps them all. So, to me, it's very clear. Thunder Maw Hellkite is by far the better card. He does more damage. He impacts the board in a much more meaningful way. He can oftentimes against the right decks be a guaranteed two for one and he clears all the way he clears the way for all of your other creatures to attack he just does more when you invest mana into him mana into him than storm breath dragon does now that's not to say that storm breath dragon doesn't have a place and there could be a meta where you won't run him or you run both maybe you have one or the other in the sideboard and that is if they are very reliant on white based removal and don't have lingering souls because like i've already pointed out even if they have white removal if they have also have Lingering Souls, Thunder Maw is probably just better because it's probably going to be a grindy matchup anyway. Um, but if against a deck like Jeskai Control, just Jeskai in general, where they have a bunch of one for rem removal, Storm Breath Dragon is almost always going to be a two for one because maybe they what have to bolt him twice. Or yeah, sure, there is a world where they can electrolyze one to him, one to your face, and bolt him, and they are technically drawing a card of electrolyze, so it's not a two for one because it replaced itself. It's kind of a corner case, it could happen. But again, you know, not not as likely. But against that deck, I think Storm Breath Dragon is better. Specifically against decks that are reliant on white based removal to get rid of large creatures and don't have Lingering Souls tokens. That is where he's better. So if, you know, Jeskai decks were to come back in a really big way, I can totally see a world where you may run a Storm Breath Dragon in the side. Or if just white based decks in general um, that don't have uh, Lingering Souls or a bunch of flyers that you can kill. With Thunderbolt Hellkite. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's my answer. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it wasn't too long. Again, I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes if I can, preferably like six to seven, just diving deep real quick on the topic. Um, if you disagree with me, let me know. If you have opinions or additional questions, put them in the comments. Um, and again, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video. Please subscribe to my uh, to my YouTube channel, and if you want to talk to me at more length, you can like my Facebook page. There's a link uh, if you click on Great Nate to go to my main 
YouTube channel. There's a link there. A um, couple of quick announcements. I am going to release the Google Sheets, you know, Magic Online tracking spreadsheet. So that's coming. And for all of you that are asking me about Esper Control, guys, I don't think it's that well positioned. I don't think it's the best deck against super aggressive decks. But I know that there's many of you out there that are as dedicated to it as I am, Jessica Geist. And I know there's not a ton of Esper Control content out there. So while I don't think it's the best positioned, and sadly, I just don't think I'm that great a pilot. Guys, I'm going to play the deck for you, and I'm going to do the very best that I can. So you have that to look forward to. And I thought that there was one more thing. I don't remember. Guys, you rock. Thanks for watching. Draw well. Smash face. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.